let's begin to deal time a little bit with the Africa Finance Corporation and the Arise Integrated Industrial Program have flagged off their Pan-African set of roadshows designed to showcase investment opportunities for companies within the many special economic zones on the continent. Let's grab excerpts from the presentations made to business leaders at the event held earlier today in Lagos. Um, together as institutions, we aim to catalyze the growth of special economic zones across the continent, starting with a key location, uh, which is Nigeria, where Arise is developing the industrial processing zone in Ogun State. These special economic zones will serve as hubs of economic activity, offering sector-specific infrastructure, strategic locations, and unparalleled support for businesses entering the African market. A key highlight of our partnership this year is the agreement to establish a dedicated $100 million capital pool for tenants within the Arise Zones. This capital pool will be tailored for entrepreneurs seeking to launch operations um, across Arise numerous locations in Africa. Um, but this initiative goes beyond financial support. AFC will also provide project finance, trade finance, and key advisory services, ensuring businesses have the necessary tools to succeed. By empowering local enterprises, we are taking concrete steps towards unlocking Africa's full potential. And this collaboration is at the heat of this. We've been able to create a massive spread across the continent. Today, as we speak, uh, we are in about 16 locations, going to another four uh, spreading across West, Central, East, South. And I think each of these locations have been very clearly identified on the back of clear feasibility studies. So before we enter a country to develop its infrastructure or to transform its value chain, us, our teams spend a lot of time in each of those countries. Um, some of the feasibility reports run up to about six, 600 to 1,000 pages. I'll give you an example of how one of the feasibilities, I've just taken some few uh, pages out of a feasibility report example of Rwanda, and you will realize the kind of deep understanding that we have of each of these countries, something that teams put together on ground, they travel length and breadth, understanding the, the major landscape and what are the other points in terms of population, GDP, uh, what are the transportation, uh, infrastructure developments, roadways, railways, the network of connectivity, the GDP, the ease of doing business. So just example for us to get into before we enter uh, into pre feasibility. And on the basis of this, we kind of create a project in terms of approaching the governments of that particular country and developing, as we call, a public-private partnership model where we clearly sit with the government, give them an understanding of what is required for the country's transformation. So this is essentially the start point of the model. And on the basis of this, of all the locations that we are in, they are all in public-private partnerships with those respective governments. We create SEZ laws specifically passed for the zones that provide benefits we work with the likes of uh, the PPP, with the likes of NEPSA, and coming together to create strategic benefits for investors, companies like you, uh, to ensure that there is development happening. And not just that, in terms of putting together, uh, the infrastructure is entirely ours, but we also backward integrate. So we work with farmers, we ensure there is growth in uh, agri output, and we bring in clients who come in and take advantage. So all, act, all four actors work in unison. This is the circular economy model, as we call it, where each of the partners cannot do and succeed without each other. So just to give you a perspective about how we've looked at value chain transformation, I've just picked on a couple of uh, examples of what we've done. Neighboring country, we started off with, we took the textile sector. I mean, we all know that Africa is probably one of the largest producers of cotton globally. But all of that cotton is getting exported predominantly into uh, China and uh, India and many other locations. And on the other side, 
Africa is importing about 40 to 48 billion dollars of, of garments and textiles. So it's, it's a massive, massive reason for us to look at this sector very strategically. And what we've done in West Africa is something that is for us, and we are extremely proud of what we've been able to deliver just with one, two countries as a beginning, but there's a lot more. Is one of the success stories where AFC has been able to support um, um, a local player uh, by the name Boa Industries. And what we essentially were able to do here, you know, we're able to support Boa to materialize its um, um, backward integration process for its sugar refinery. Um, as against the importation of brown sugar and then processing them, we've been able to, or we were able to provide up to $200 million in a corporate facility to Boa um, to invest in a large scale um, sugar plantation, uh, which is about um, 20 hectares plantation, and as well as also invest in a, in a 2.2 million um, ton sugar milling plant and a sugar refinery that has an annual capacity of 200, uh, 200 tons per annum. And what has been the impact of, of course, the first impact is that we're able to, of course, um, reduce the sugar import bill by $2 billion through this investment. Um, sugar is one of the top, inv uh, top import, uh, imported products in Nigeria. And as a result of having this project in place, we're able to reduce um, the sugar import bill by $4 billion. And of course, that reduces the, uh, the pressure on FX in Nigeria. Um, also, there's also the provision of job. This particular project, directly and indirectly, has led to the development or, or, or has led to the creation of 15,000 jobs. And of course, like I said earlier on, um, FX or the pressure on FX is essentially reduced through import substitution as we partner with agro highlight um, industries, uh, manufacturing industry, and industrial players to, um, like yourself, you know, to to um, to further develop their product and, and improve or increase their expansion across Africa.